today we're going to review some details for best practices on both stucco and cut stone. I got my builder friend Brian Long here and this gorgeous house behind us has been totally transformed. We're going to show you what this looked like before. Today's build show, best practice for cut stone and stucco. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to my buddy, Brian Long. Brian, thank you for having us back to your job hey, Matt, site. Good seeing you again. So, Brian, we've been here a couple times before, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, looking at the most disastrous to the best, yeah. So, this house is quite a bit older, right? This is not new construction. What is this, 10 years old now? Something yes, like that? Yes, yes. And Brian almost built this house originally, but didn't get selected. The homeowners chose a less costly builder. And unfortunately, that was a, uh, no pun intended, costly mistake. Absolutely. We visited this house, I don't know, maybe two years ago now, before Brian did any work, and we found some serious reasons for concern before you even took the facade off. Yes. And then once the facade came off, it was unbelievably bad what we found over yeah. there, Brian. Give us a quick sense of what we found. That corner over there had no kick-out flashings. The water was pouring back into the wall yep. cavity and you could literally get them up with your hands and just eat the walls with your hands like Pac-Man. Not uh, good. Yeah, no, I mean, it was terrible. Not only that, but you know, there's, the stucco looked like it was trying to jump off the wall. It looked like this wall back behind us, you know, it, everywhere. So the stucco on the front of the house is a, a masonry product, right? Yeah. Think of a sidewalk on your house. And where the stucco attached to the house, all the waterproofing, all the WRB that was back there was, was thoroughly substandard. Yeah. And this is not an easy house to build, Brian, because you've got all these recessed windows. Yes, sir. You've got this uh, you know, front porch with a little bit of a uh, flat roof above it that's catching all this water from above. So basically, Brian had to redo the entire outside of the house. Now, when you came back uh, on the outside, you went back with one of my favorite products. You used that UV240 from Polyguard, formerly known as Aluma Flash. Exactly. And then the big difference that you made, Brian, on this house was you put, you added some forgiveness to the system by adding an air gap behind the stucco. So yes. any water that gets through the stucco has an air gap and, and basically a place, a drainage plane for that stucco uh, to be able to drain out that water. From Top the to bottom, all the way through, yeah. Even behind our masonry product too. And then on the recessed windows in particular, all of the metal pans, which is a great detail for recessed windows, were penetrated with, uh, with Multiple staples, right? Multiple staples, nails, whatever they could get to hold it up. Yeah, it was, it was really quite funny, you know, not so, not funny, so funny, not funny, but funny. Yeah, yeah, funny, not funny. So you had to fix all that yes. before we got back into stucco. So what you're seeing here though, is really stucco best practice where there's a full, rain screen air gap behind the entire house. Now, Brian, I want to focus in particular on a couple details uh, here that include some cut stone on the outside yes. and stucco in those intersections. So I actually learned something from you recently or today based on this. Give us some understanding of, of uh, what you've done here and challenges that houses have that maybe have cut stone on the outside. Guaranteeing a drain plane when you have a, this is basically a thin stone veneer. Mm -hmm. The best way that we found to do it was take our brown coat of our stucco all the way behind it, yep. guaranteeing that air gap behind it yep. so we won't ever get calcification on this stone. And we have that drain plane coming all the way down and turning out at the bottom underneath this. So by doing that, we were able to apply this stone like a tile with the thin set. If water gets in there, it's got a way to get out. Yeah, I like that. Tell us the, the process. So basically the entire house got wrapped with, with uh, UV240. Exactly. The whole house looks silver. Yes. Uh, and then uh, how did you apply the rain screen and what material did you use? All of our rain screen was applied with a stainless steel screw. Okay. We used a bead of 2200 on the rain screen put it on the wall, screwed through the 2200, guaranteeing that we had a leak proof yep. uh, application. Uh, the poly guard people tell me that the best practice is to use a screw because the screw will gasket on that, on, when it penetrates the yep. rubber, it goes into it. Works really well. We uh, water tested it, never had any issues whatsoever. So in other words, you had these these strips of the, what is the name of that plastic? Regal Plastic. Regal Plastic sells at Polycarb. Basically a corrugated 
cardboard, but made from plastic. Yeah, uh, and it's very dense. When you run the screw in, you can actually dimple it, mm -hmm. but it won't crack. And if you're using it behind like wood siding, it's wonderful because where typical rain screens, when you attach the wood, mm -hmm. it wants to indent right, everywhere you right. fasten it. This has what, enough structure. It has enough structure that it keeps it dead flat. Yeah, I like that. So if you're using like a Delta product or, you know, using a, some thermally modified product, it comes out really nice. Very clean, very true. Gotcha. And carpenters love it because they don't have to fight trying to put the tongue and groove together. Yeah really works well and then on top of that and what thickness did you end up having on that was that quarter or three eighths we used uh well it depended on w different locations sometimes we were having to bring things in or out okay. so we had quarter three sixteenths and eighth inch in places okay. so it was just we had to go back to what was there but we at least had at least a minimum of an eighth inch okay so we had some air gap there then you went on top of that with probably just a standard uh, tar paper of some variety? Yes. Like a super jumbo yeah, we, text we, or something we, like that? Yeah, we actually spaced all of our rain screens so that it would work out perfect with the lath. Okay, perfect. And so then a super jumbo text, then your lath attached mechanically to the yes. house, then your brown coat. And when you brown coated this house, it was a full brown coat. You didn't stop, let's say, where the cut stone was going to be, correct? That's, a, that's exactly right. So in other words, this corner has full brown coat all the way to the corner. That's exactly and right. And then it's really just like tiling a shower, right? Yes. At that point. Yep. And we are, you know, everything will be sealed. There is Miracoat products that we've used in certain areas. We actually added an anti-fracture membrane on all of our stucco. Oh, smart. And when the house was done originally, it didn't have any expansions. So we put expansions everywhere that they called for it Let's to make sure that- Let's flip around so we can talk about this corner, Brian. Yeah. So, uh, so you've got that expansion that's horizontal there, but I suspect there might be some more that are hidden behind the cut stone too, That's right? exactly what we did. We were able to do that to make sure that the brown coat wouldn't fracture. Gotcha. So our finished coat works from you know, there, of course, it's stucco to stucco, but we applied all the stone and then put our finish coat right up to the stucco. Gotcha. Or the stucco right up to the finished stone, sorry. Yeah, got it. Now, let's talk thermal expansion because this is what I learned from you today that I didn't know about. That corner that has that cut stone, where that corner comes together, I've noticed that you've, you've laced in another piece of stone on that corner that comes out. It's not a mitered corner, in other words. That's correct. We did miter them originally and they used an epoxy to put them together. Mm -hmm. And we started noticing that the corners were starting to fracture right at the very edge. So I you brought up- see that right here. Let's go yeah, look at it. Yeah. This corner got epoxied and because of that, what happened? Yeah, you can see it. The pressure from this stone expanding and this one expanding took that miter and just popped it, just wow. made it crack. Wow. And I wasn't aware, until I talked to the engineer, we thought the house was actually maybe moving or shifting. Uh -huh. He said, no, that's caused by the thermal expansion of the stone itself. The stone actually grows. Yeah. And if you, know, you don't use something in here that has give, uh -huh. or some type of like sanded caulk, like a Sashco product or something in there, it's gonna do that. And we're facing kind of south and west here. That's full sun is hitting this side of the house and here at noon. it gets hot. Yeah, you know, on, on hot a, days, on this summer day. really gets hot. Yeah. So in other words, that corner is basically just experiencing a little bit of movement. It's not water that's expanding it. No. It's thermal expansion. Thermal expansion. The heat is making the stone move so, a little bit. So the fix was came from our mason. He said, if we do a solid piece of stone, we can cut this in, cut this in, and then we use a sanded caulk there where we get that movement. Yeah. And now it's solid, so it can't crack on the corner. So in other words, these joints that we're seeing that look like mortar, that's actually a latex sanded caulk. Sashko yeah. makes some of that. I'm sure there's some others on the market. It's it's kind of like big stretch that, that's colored to look like grout, uh, and it has sand in it, but it's got that ability to, to expand and move. And yeah, and you know, you'll see it, it you know, and we've actually seen it. It'll it'll bulge out just slightly on a very hot day, ah. and then it goes back in when it cools. <laughs> that's wild. So yeah, it's you like- see that yeah, just like, like silly putty you know yeah. you're just seeing it squeeze Got it. but no more cracking yeah so, so in this corner the fix is going to be you're actually going to cut this uh yes. put a solid piece in and then this will end up being flush because you've got a crown that you need to that's uh, correct this will be the only ones that are this is the only part of the house where i'll have flush everywhere else you can see on the lower areas where we've actually done it and made the fix it's come out really well gotcha gotcha I do want to point out uh, where he's got recessed windows. 
full metal pan in place, no penetrations in that pan, there's no screws, there's no, no nails, staples, nothing. So like that big piece right there that's on that sill, by the way, that, that, that sill has a little pitch to get yes. that water out. The sub sill is pitched too. And it's basically just floating on top. There's no, no um, penetration. There's no, no mechanical penetrations through that pan. That was a big problem before. Oh yeah, I mean it's a problem everywhere. You don't ever want to penetrate that pan. Yeah. And it just takes somebody with some skill. We're doing their metal work. They can wire it together. Yeah. They can use all types of different products. And once the mud's in there, you just have your mud set pan. It's going to work just great. That's beautiful. Yeah. Now, Brian, I got to ask you, that crown mold at the top looks to be continuous how did you get a limestone piece that's like 20 feet long up there in that uh you know i i would make a joke here but it's actually a foam product okay so that's not limestone that's not it limestone looks just like limestone to me it really here. does our our stucco contractor is just one of a kind he's world class it's all about the detail finishing of that actual product after it's put on. it's put on with big screws it screws in but it's all about working that mud coat, that finish coat on it before they apply the finish. Gotcha. And he just did an amazing job. Fabulous. Really. I yeah. mean, maybe if you're uh, if you're six inches from it, you can tell that that's not limestone. But from the ground, like if I look at this carriage house over here, uh, you can see the limestone in the full sun as we come up the uh, the angle, and it appears to be dying right into a limestone crown. But that is not limestone crown. It's that foam, there's a piece right there. Yeah. Uh, it's foam that's been uh, faked to look like limestone and boy, it looks like a million bucks. Yeah, it really does. And, and when we originally came to the house, that was the first thing that caught my eye. It literally looked like somebody had thrown sand at it. It was horrible looking. It didn't, yeah. you could tell it was foam. Yeah. We've had people go, wow, I can't believe you got pieces of limestone that big. You know, so it's actually quite the compliment for our stucco contract. Yeah, really well done. All right, anybody watching this that's thinking French country, that's thinking stucco and limestone, uh, let's end with a little bit of advice from a couple of older builders that have seen the problems when it's not done right. You've got to take water management seriously, uh, and especially in a house like this that has recessed windows, there is just a lot of future problems if you don't do it right. So a couple things that I might mention, I'm curious what you think about this. Uh, you know, number one, we gotta use the Bomber WRB products. We've gotta use the yeah. best out there. I'd also consider hiring an envelope engineer in a house like this. When we've got a multi-million dollar house, we've got a client that has deep pockets. You don't wanna be the builder uh, who made the mistakes and gets the phone call, right? We wanna Absolutely. make sure that when we build this house and we're using their money, that it gets done correctly. Consider if you don't know what you're doing, get a consultant to help you, get an envelope engineer, consider having all of your water, uh, all of your windows water tested before you move on to the stucco phase to make sure everything's nice and watertight. You can get a spray rack out there. There's separate companies that can do that. Water testing your windows, I, I can't say enough. I've, I just went, went through this with a company I won't mention, but they promised me it wasn't their windows, it wasn't their windows. It was their window. <laughs> uh, and so you but had if you to, wouldn't have tested, you wouldn't have known. That's right. And 37 windows. Oh, my gosh. So, wow. yeah, that's how bad it was. Uh, and then lastly, have maybe that same envelope uh, consultant come inspect during construction and verify that you're doing the details right. That's that's going to give you a lot of forgiveness. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of assurances to both you and the client that and the house sleep. is done right. It'll let you sleep. You're going to sleep well tonight. Because <laughs> this is a very tough house and a very expensive house. And Brian is going to sleep well tonight. Yes. Knowing that all the details were buttoned up nicely on this house. Thank you. Beautiful house, Brian. Thanks. I mean, from the drone shots, the, the, the details that, that I want to mention as we finish the video is your copper guy absolutely killed it here. Yeah. Like that chimney that's above us here yeah. looks like a woven purse almost, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, like a Louis Vuitton. It's yeah. the Louis Vuitton <laughs> chimney on the house. Yeah. This is not an inexpensive project, but if you're going to build a house like this, you've got to pick a really good builder. You've got to pick somebody like Brian that's got a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge. And then don't be afraid to hire some additional experts to help you on the project to make sure that it gets done right. And you got to spend the money to do it right. There's nothing better than having a consultant that really knows what they're talking about, giving you their tips and things that they've seen done right. wrong. Because knowledge is uh, freedom for all of us and it, it, it makes us all better.
And yeah. and lastly, I would say, look, even Brian and I learned something new about thermal expansion that I didn't know about. I would have done the exact same thing with those mitered corners yeah. and epoxy them. And look how good this looks, Mr. Klein. And then, you know, three months later, they're popping off. Well, we didn't know, right? Yeah. So that's why having some consultants, uh, some engineers help us on these projects makes a really big difference. It truly does. Brian, appreciate your friendship, brother. Yeah, absolutely, same. Brian Long Custom Homes here in Austin, Texas. I'll put a link to Brian's company uh, down in the description below. But if you guys aren't subscribers, we shoot videos twice a week. Uh, we're trying to pass on our wisdom and all our mistakes to you so you don't make the same mistakes and so you build really good houses that are watertight, that are gonna last, that are gonna take the worst of mother nature and laugh at it. So that this house, 50 years from now, when it gets remodeled, is gonna go, man, who built this? This guy did an amazing job. Look at these pans on these windows. Look at the rain screen on this stucco. Yeah. And they're gonna realize, oh, that was Brian Long. I remember him, he was an amazing builder. Thank you, Brian, for doing a great job on this house, right? That's what we need. We need builders that really care about craftsmanship, and getting the details right. And that's what we talk about every week. So hit that subscribe button below. Brian, would you do the outro with me? Follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on, on the, build the Build Show. show.